Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're at G2E Macau. Uh, today's guest on the podcast is Nihar Joshi. Nihar, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here, uh, Philip. Yeah, and it's great. We're going to talk about trends in the region for Asia and gaming. We're going to talk about AI, AI and marketing. You have a presentation coming up today. Yes. Here at the conference. Yes. You've been in Singapore for 12 years. Yes. Originally from India, though. Originally uh, from Mumbai. Yes. Great city. <laughs> Fantastic. I yes. was just there in uh, November, had a really good time, ate a lot of good food. Yeah. Uh, so on my side again, yes, uh, my session is going to be all about uh, AI and marketing. So to give you a bit of a background on myself, I've been in the industry for almost uh, 18, 19 years. Uh, started my career in uh, Mumbai, of course, uh, transitioned over to Singapore. Uh, been with companies like Adobe, eBay, uh, more on the marketing side. Uh, and I've seen the industry actually transition uh, drastically in the last, I would rather say, five or seven years. So the whole topic of AI and marketing is very close. Uh, the company I represent now, the company that I'm with uh, Pega now, Systems. is Pega Systems. Yeah. Uh, and Pega has been investing heavily in these capabilities for the last 10 years. Uh, of course, there's a bit of a bias when I say this, but uh, we are ahead of the curve uh, from a technology standpoint. And if I specifically talk about the gaming industry, uh, we see a lot of good conversations. So we already have a presence. So a lot of mm -hmm. the integrated resorts, as we call them, uh, they are our customers. They use Pega for multiple reasons. Uh, and the whole idea of the objective is to showcase to them what we do in the marketing and the AI space. In the marketing. Uh, let, let's back up for a moment. You said eBay and Adobe. Yes. Uh, related to gaming or no? Uh, not really gaming, but Adobe was mostly into the marketing analytics space. Uh, Adobe has uh, some really good products in front-end channels. Pega works a lot in the front-end, middleware, and the back-end operations as well. So Pega sort of completes that story. So to sort of say, not specifically to gaming, yeah. we cut across multiple verticals. Even uh, my role at Pega is to increase Pega's presence across different client verticals and gaming is one of them. How did you personally make the transition from Adobe eBay to gaming? <laughs> so, so as I said, so gaming has been a component of my experience. Uh, it was actually very organic. It was not a very well thought through uh, decision. But in the last few years, as I said, uh, during COVID times, I would rather put it this way. Uh, I joined uh, Pega during the COVID times, sometime uh, around that period. And we realized one thing, because the whole travel industry was completely shut, there was a lot of time on the client side to learn and understand what's available in the market, what more we can do. Uh, and Pega really does or thrives really well when the clients are all yours, because it's a slightly mature and a complex technology, I would say. It requires the client's attention. Uh, so we were able to gauge that. And the moment that happened, it kind of grew. So pause on that for a moment. Sure. Tell us a little bit about Pega Systems. So Pega is a technology company. We are uh, a BPM workflow automation uh, platform on which you can build multiple applications. Uh, and the use cases can be endless. So we work with large enterprise organizations. We work within the gaming industry. We work with banking companies. We work with governments. Uh, and just to add to that, the reason why I'll stress on this one is because the topic is AI, there is a lot of conversation with regards to the governance of AI. Is it a black box? Do we know what is happening on the back end? So Pega has invested heavily in ethical AI as well. So that's one of the reasons why uh, these large organizations work with us, they engage with us. What does that mean when you're investing in ethical AI? Simply put, as I said, uh, when you talk about AI, it's an ever evolving field. Let me just you know, kind of uh, put that straight. Uh, whatever we do today will be very different from what we do six months from now, a year from now. Right. So one thing that is very critical is to avoid any bias mm -hmm. in the uh, AI algorithms that you build on the back end. You need to know how an application has made a certain decision. And Pega gives you the historical backlog data as well. So tomorrow, worst case scenario, if there is an audit to avoid say a bias against a certain sect of audiences, like a certain offer cannot be sent to a certain person because of X, Y, Z reason, which are not marketing reasons, but there is a bias that gets built in. 
that can actually get exposed using Pega. So that's the element of ethical AI that we also focus on. Because tomorrow if I don't like XYZ person, I can build an application or define the rules in a way that a certain message will not be sent to a certain person because of my own internal biases. So it takes away that bias element within the application as well. And when you are having conversations about AI in gaming, what do you hear is the most common resistance? I would rather put it this way. Uh, and again, because we touch upon the fact that we engage with large companies. So mm -hmm. I don't want to take names, but all the big names that you see here right now, a bunch of them are pair customers because the compliance and uh, confidentiality clauses that we have to work, uh, work with. I would rather say the biggest resistance is uh, when you want to bring about any change in the organization, the technology will work. You know, it will work in, because there are a lot, there's a lot of standardization built within the technology. The biggest resistance is to actually uh, is actually around the organization structure and the people. So there's a lot of change management that needs to happen within the organizations, within the integrated resorts that we speak with. Because end of the day, the, like if I just want to put touch upon marketing, right? There are functions that are built which are very channel specific. Like someone's doing only acquisition marketing, someone's doing any deselling opportunities, someone's doing uh, you know loyalty. Now these are the different functions. Now Pega, what we educate and encourage the customers to do is look, keep the customer at the center. All of these communications are strategies. Your customers comes in the center of all the communication strategies. So now the organizations need to change their internal structures to align with what Pega offers, and that takes a bit of time. Now, for your application, today you're talking about AI and marketing. That's correct. What does that mean? AI and marketing is very simple because, as I said, you know, this topic is especially with the advent of chat GPT and open AI, everyone's using it, right? In multiple ways, we are using AI uh, in our day-to-day -day lives. It simply means the business leaders have to deal with data, analytics, and communication in real time. That was, what that basically means is you need a technology provider that is able to converge all of this information, make sense of it, and then define the customer engagement strategy. So what AI helps you to do is, there's so much of data flowing in, in real time. To manage, churn, and analyze that data, you need help of these tools. So AI is nothing but a tool that helps empower the business leaders to run much better customer experience strategies within the organization. And make more informed decisions. Absolutely, more informed decisions which are relevant to the customers, not relevant to the business. What success stories are you hearing? What are you hearing from your customers uh, and how quick are they reporting good news? So we do work with a lot of... Uh, so I would rather put it this way. Uh, within the gaming industry, we do work with a lot of customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I said, you know, Pega thrives in complexity. We do really well when there are very complex systems in this place. And then we build a lot of automation and seamless uh, functioning within the organization. So. Even though we do a lot of work, we don't come and shout about it because we're not supposed to. There are certain confidential clauses uh, within our contracts. But having said that, in the last 10 years, I think we are the only organization that has multiple success stories not that are out there in the market that we speak about in different verticals, in banking. Because end of the day, the customer experience principle is similar to all business verticals. Everyone's dealing with their customers. The communication strategies and applications might be different. The architecture layer might be different, but the end goal is the same. How do I become more relevant to my customer? So in banking, we have a lot of success stories. In telcos, we have a lot of success stories. In gaming, we have success stories. We just don't talk about it, but we have analyst reports, which are third-party analyst reports. And they analyze, assess, pegger success with these customers, and they've come out with these reports, which basically are completely unbiased uh, uh, and that's a lot of times a starting point of a conversation for clients who have not heard of Pega. And, and sometimes you're talking about the customer and the guest uh, in the casino, the guest experience. How does AI improve the guest experience? Absolutely. So that's in fact a, a very large part of my uh, presentation today. So 
when you look at casinos, right? So within Asia region, investments are just rolling in. Uh, and I was just doing some reading before I came to the event. Uh, Singapore is going to add more integrated resorts to its uh, in, the, in the country. Philippines is getting huge investments. They are sort of creating special economic zones. So when these investments come about, what happens is they have the chance or the opportunity to jumpstart the technology implementation that they do. Right? Because you have existing systems that are in place. So when you jumpstart this, what happens is you need to look out what are the changing trends within the casino industry. First thing is the profile of your customers is changing drastically. So earlier it was a bit more senior, mature audiences that would actually visit, but now you see a lot more, I would rather see younger generations. But even I, I wouldn't put the age factor in it, but also a lot more evolved audiences who are comfortable engaging across multiple channels. You have a website, you have a mobile application, you're, you're basically enjoying on the, on the floor across gaming consoles and platforms. So there's data coming in from all of these sources. So there's a lot of education that needs to be done mm -hmm. in terms of how do we connect all of that information and how do we change or utilize that data a lot better. So these are some of the trends that we are kind of educating our sort of prospective customers on within the gaming and uh, uh, casino industry. And, and the host teams probably love Fantastic. Love it? Yes. So, because hosts, the people who are there dealing with mm -hmm. the patrons on the floor, if they end up getting real-time information about the customers, it's a lot easier to engage with them. Mm -hmm. Imagine if I have a great time on the floor, right? If I've had a great time, I've won a lot of money. The host wants to ensure that I spend more time. Mm -hmm. I spend more time at the property, I use more services, the more time I spend, it's better for the business. All of that information comes on the application on which the host is working on. And this is real time I'm talking about. This is not something that the host will get the next day. It'll come the same day. So that's the, the power of these, you know, uh, communication engines that can actually bring about within the whole industry. And the moment you change, you tweak some strategies, suddenly you start seeing a drastic change in terms of your sort of marketing KPIs that you normally work on, and which in turn links to the revenue. Uh, that businesses are trying to generate. You know, you said the word communications. And really, uh, AI is almost a tool to improve communication. Absolutely. Uh, not only with your guest, but internally. Yes, absolutely. So, that's also a very, very important element of, uh, of Pega's approach in terms of how do we look at designing a communication strategy. Uh, and you touch upon a very good point uh, about internal communications within the organization, within the functioning of an integrated resort, of a casino. So when you talk about broadly, right, you have your channels or platforms where clients are just surfing information organically on your applications and websites, but you have your channels like hosts, your customer service agents, your front desk uh, uh, assistants. All of that integration is also very, very necessary. So I'll just uh, say one thing. Uh, today is my birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So when I actually, uh, I'm a member of a car. so when I actually checked in, the front desk knew about my information, they gave me a lot of freebies, made me feel good. Mm -hmm. But there were certain areas where I felt the people didn't know about it. There is an opportunity. Not that I want to feel great about my birthday, but there was an opportunity to kind of engage with me in a slightly different way. Better communication. Better communication strategies. More information, information. better information. Absolutely. And then how to leverage that to Absolutely. really improve the guest experience. If I tell you more about a particular customer, isn't it easier for you to have a better conversation with the customer. Sure. Easy, right? So sure. what we say is give that information to the host, to the sure. front-end desks, to the customer service agents. Also, where the AI comes into play is also analyze. If I am having, I'm looking for a spa service, I'm looking for a casino, I'm looking for a, uh, a dining opportunity or whatever, what should be the communication or what should be uh, sort of the area where the host should be speaking to me on. If I'm sure. someone who loves food, then the dining experiences need to be pushed. That communication needs to come in first. So, Pega applies a lot of AI on the back end to also guide these people in terms of what should the person be talking to me about because that's of my interest. Mm. Uh, Nihar, before we say farewell, uh, you have your presentation today. There's 8,000 people here at G2E Asia. There's still a lot of unknowns about AI, but if there was one thing that you would hope that when people leave G2E Asia right. this time, 
What is that one thing you'd want them to know about AI for the gaming industry? Okay, so there's one thing that I would definitely say, and I've said this uh, to a lot of people. AI is not a ghost. There's a logic and there's a pattern that's built within AI, right? So it's, it's, it's not rocket science, it's logical, right? Uh, don't be scared of it, embrace it. It's not here to take our jobs, it's only gonna empower us a lot better. Because there is a lot of fear mongering that's happening around AI. Oh, what's gonna happen to my job if I do this? No. We've seen this historically, whenever there is a technological advancement, you've seen that people have embraced it, it's helped the business grow the ecosystem. It'll only help grow the ecosystem. So that's one. And second is, start using it as soon as possible. <laughs> start what? soon. Start soon. Yeah. I mean, why are you delaying that, that yeah. decision-making process? Uh, mm -hmm. Test it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are tools there in the market. Test it. No uh, doubt. And see, see the benefit for yourself. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, Nihar, uh, happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you so Thank much. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It was great. And uh, great uh, for all those listening or watching, you will find Nihar's contact info in the description to the video or the podcast. Absolutely. Thank you so much, yeah. Philip, and uh, glad to be here. Thank you. Thanks a lot.